So welcome again, everybody. Uh, Teams Voice and Collaboration q and I'm your host, Tony Capriletti. I am a solutions architect here at ProServe IT. My role as a solutions architect is a couple of different things. I mostly uh, interact with, uh, with customers and our sales team and even our technical team. Uh, I'm using it mostly as a pre-sales pre -sales resource. So uh, I, I talk to customers. I actually help a solution uh, many different products around the Microsoft stack. Um, more recently, I've been focused on Microsoft Teams, which is why I'm, I'm doing this session today. I've uh, been doing a lot of work around the collaboration side, uh, and even Teams Voice became a, a really big, a really big project for a lot of customers, a lot of customers, especially in the nonprofit space this year, because uh, a lot of companies are starting to move away from old phone systems and, and wanted to get into something new, voice over IP related. And if you're already using Microsoft Teams, it's, uh, it's an easy transition uh, if you're already using Teams or Skype for business. So I've been getting a lot of questions uh, for the last year or so, and I just felt that or we felt that it would be a good opportunity to allow you guys to, to pick my brain and to ask questions uh, around Teams, and I will try to answer them. And we do have a couple here already, or at least one for sure. Okay. We've got James asking, what is the most cost-effective way for nonprofits to leverage Teams phone system or voice to minimize costs? <laughs> What's the most cost-effective way? Mm-hmm. Well, <clears throat> it depends, really. Uh, when when you think about using Teams Voice, uh, there's two ways to use it. One is that Microsoft ends up being your carrier uh, and the one who manages your phone numbers and your calling minutes uh, per user. The other way to use it is through a third-party carrier. Uh, so in Canada, that might be something like Rogers or ThinkTel, Bell, Telus, something like that, and one of those carriers uh, would have the ability to provide a SIP service, uh, and that SIP service would tie directly into Teams. And so usually, uh, to keep it simple, direct routing, that service is called direct routing when you use a third-party carrier. And it starts to make sense financially when you get over and above 75 to 100 users on average in the organization who's using the phone system. So uh, either way, it, it works just, just as well. The difference is that the, uh, the monthly subscription costs from Microsoft change slightly if you use them as the carrier because you're required to have a calling plan associated with your account. Whereas if you use a third party carrier and direct routing, uh, there's no need for that calling plan because the carrier is going to provide you the numbers, the DIDs, and the minutes that are associated with each user or each DID for that matter. So that's not necessarily uh, required. The other, uh, while we're talking about licensing and costs, the other important thing when you're using the phone system is that you need at least one license to use the phone system. That's called the phone system license. Uh, and each user that wants to make a phone uh, phone call out to the PSTN world uh, has, to, has to have that phone system license associated with their account. Uh, and then once you have that phone system license, you are then entitled to a DID number, whether that DID number is from Microsoft or it's from whatever carrier it is that you're assigned. Uh, and hopefully that answers your question. We do have a question coming in, and I think it's probably around sort of similar to what you just chatted with, um, the difference between direct routing and Microsoft calling plan. Um, if you can maybe address those. Yeah, I'll try, I'll try to elaborate a little more if I can. So direct routing just means that there's another carrier, a third party carrier like you know, Rogers, Telus, Bell, uh, providing you with phone numbers and, and minutes to dial out. And so we have to take that, that service, which is, they're providing a SIP service, which is abbreviated Session Initiation Protocol. They're providing that service, which we will connect into, or you can connect into the, the Microsoft Teams PBX. And then the Teams PBX is what manages all of your call flows, 
your cues, your hunt groups, um, and such. Uh, Microsoft calling, calling again, which is the other the other side of the the calling solution, is where Microsoft is your carrier, and they provide you with the IDs and and minutes associated with each user account. Okay, and to have to be able to dial out to the PSTN, you need certain licenses to be able to do that. And you know, there's you know, it's it's available on a you know per license SKU basis, which is like the phone system. There's audio conferencing, and then the third one is a calling plan. Okay, and you need a calling plan if you're going to use Microsoft as your carrier. You don't need a calling plan if you're going to use uh, direct routing. Okay, hopefully that simplifies it a little bit. Awesome. We have a question here. When an employee leaves the organization, how do you share their Microsoft phone and or VM with the manager? How do you share? Oh, that's more of a, a, a tech, technical question to, to doing it. Um, it is possible. Uh, so that number, what happens is that when you when that person leaves, that number is either uh, removed from their account, or it's either it's either removed from their account, or it stays on that account for a period of time until which time you know you want to remove the licenses from it, and then get access. So you either have to go and download the voicemail that that person has uh, to a separate separate share of some sort, um, or you can give you know the manager or whatever access to that user account where they can go and listen and and view the content within that user account. Uh, I think that's what you were asking, but actually doing it, uh, I don't have the ability to show you to do it at the moment, um, but it is possible. It's more or less just giving permission to that user account from the manager account to be able to do it. Hopefully that works for the, for the moment. Awesome. And David, if there's a follow up question to that, you can certainly feel free to uh, to ask that in as well. All right, we've got some uh, seems like we've got a few shy people on the on the line here, Tony. So I'm just going to kind of pop in a question here. Uh, sure. What are the licensing requirements for Microsoft Teams voice? Good, good question. And it's a question that I get a lot from users and it it's sometimes confusing. So again, to use Microsoft Calling, if Microsoft is your carrier, you need a phone system license. You need an, either an audio conferencing license if you're going to schedule uh, conference calls with external parties who don't have Microsoft Teams and they want a phone number to dial into. I think it may be even be good for me to show you what this, what this looks like. So if we look down here, when you have the audio conferencing license, you'll see this when you create a Teams meeting, okay? So you'll get the link, which anybody internally can join by clicking on the link if you're on a laptop or even a cell phone for that matter. Or, you know, you might have external numbers associated with the account, like a 604 number or, uh, you know, 647, 416, depending on whatever region you're in, you can assign those local codes to that user account so that external parties can, can dial in. OK, so that's the audio conferencing portion of it. If you're again, if you're wanting to dial out, you need a phone system license. And then secondly, if you're using calling plans, you'll need a calling plan, uh, calling plan SKU. Now, the default calling plan per user is 3000 minutes per month, OK, uh, per user per month. And then those minutes can be pooled with other users in the organization who are in the same region. So if I had 10 users in Toronto, for example, and all of those users have the same calling plan, 3,000 minutes uh, times 10, so now we've got 30,000 minutes to share amongst those 10 users, okay? And that goes on a per month basis. There is a calling plan that's, uh, that's less, that's like a really starter plan, it's like 120 minutes per month, but you know maybe some users don't use the phone that, that often, and they just need 120 minutes. And again, those minutes can be pooled with other users with the same calling plan SKU as well. So what are the what are the benefits of using Teams Voice? Um, 
Yeah, I guess the idea that, you know, it is a voice over IP system, right? Um, the fact that you're not tied to a desk anymore, you go, you, you know, pretty much can work anywhere. You know, we're all pretty much working from home now. Uh, and so Teams for me is my phone system with, uh, with ProServe IT. So our corporate phone system is Microsoft Teams. My number travels with me wherever I go. As long as I have internet access, I can, I can dial out. And the great thing is, is that, you know, now with my with cell phones, I've got the Teams app on my cell phone and anytime I go anywhere, if, even if I have an LTE connection uh, or a cellular connection and the Teams mobile app is working, I can dial out from my corporate phone number, uh, you know, to wherever. Uh, and it's the same, it's pretty much the same experience as it is on my, my laptop or desktop. Um, and I can transfer calls, you know, to, to and from my mobile device or my laptop, depending on where I'm at. Sometimes if I might be, uh, I might be on my laptop and I want to jump in the car. I'll get my, my phone ready, my Bluetooth uh, headphones, and I'll transfer it and get in the car and go, and, and off I go. So yeah, I think from that standpoint, it's, it's really convenient is what it comes down to. Teams is really convenient. And again, if you're already a Microsoft shop and even using Teams or Skype for Business from before, uh, it's going to be a really smooth transition for you, for the most part, and it's a it's a pretty easy, uh, easy, easily adoptable uh, platform uh, from a user perspective. So, as you may may or may not know, right? Teams is a uh, is obviously more than just a, a phone system. The phone system has uh, kind of been like the the last the last feature to turn on within Teams. But what's happened, I guess, with COVID is that a lot of companies were were not necessarily planning to use Teams Voice right away, uh, but then they were they were forced to when they were forced to stay home and didn't really have a phone system to use. So a lot of companies were like, I need Teams Voice now. But the fact of the matter is, is that Teams is a an entire suite of a collaboration suite, right? You have the ability to do chatting, you have the ability to, you know, calendaring, um, and, and most importantly, there's the ability to to create uh, specialized teams and channels within within those within those teams uh, to maybe manage different projects or projects that you're working on, you can collaborate on different documentation. You can have separate uh, chat streams for different channels. Um, it's it's pretty comprehensive. And then, with that being said, there's a number of applications. Uh, you know, from the marketplace that are able to be integrated with Microsoft Teams now. And there's more and more coming like every day, honestly. So the features that are being offered with Teams are, are expanding on a, at a rapid basis. I can't even keep up, to be fair. Uh, there's just so, there's so many. And I, what I see happening in the next year or two is this, it's just going to explode. Uh, the use of Teams has already exploded in the past year because of where, you know, what we've all been through. So with that being said, I think we'll, we'll close it off now. I don't see any other questions coming in at the moment. Yes, thank you guys very much and uh, I will leave it there. Have a great day.